Give it a sec. It says it's starting. All right, we're live. Hello, everybody. Oh, Hello, Brian. Hello. How are you doing, mate? All right, Sam. What's going on? How was your week? Dude, great. However, this is the Get Some Fire podcast. Um, it is an open format podcast, uh, specifically in Apex, in Apex Entourage, that we're popping this up. So if you've got any questions for me or Brian during the course of the show, uh, throw them in the chat. We will monitor the comments. We will get to them as they come up. We did have a guest lined up. I'm not sure if she's going to make it um, or not. <clears throat> the uh, yeah, she got the fabulous. She's going to try and get on, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, she's had a, a couple of little technical difficulties where she's actually she she may not be able to come on the show tonight. But uh, in the sake of consistency and timekeeping, which are two of our core values, we wanted to get this live and uh, and going right now. So. Um, it's just me and Brian for now. If you guys have uh, comments or questions or can throw us a thumbs up, let us know you're watching. That'd be great. We, uh, we do these every Monday night. Um, we're trying to get the uh, Apex crew involved and get them on as interviews. But it is just basically a refresher of last week and uh, get some fire for your week ahead because uh, we've all got these, uh, these little mountains to climb that we're working on doing. So uh, without further ado, Brian, are you still riding at dawn, mate? We're How's still riding going? at dawn. We are uh, 119, I think it is today. And uh, Why do you do that, man? That's so much uh, fucking riding. My legs are just like on fire. Um, That's but, so uh, much riding. It's good. It's good, you know. It's, uh, it keeps my, my head, head going, keeps my mind right. I get to do my messages. Um, I shared with you earlier, you know, I got people reaching out to me, sending me messages that, uh, uh, let's see, where's this one today? This was just so cool. Hey, Brian, I just want to tell you how inspirational you are. I love all the stuff you post, saying great things and giving people great advice. Early morning, any early morning prayers, you're awesome. You know, stuff like that is the whole reason. You just make up your own messages then. I just just make up, yeah. You make them up by yourself. I got one here that says, look, it says Sam is really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you. It's a drill. Yeah, it's right here. I'll show you. There it is. It's on there. But, Nobody um, can see that, Brian. But um, that's what gives me the inspiration to keep going, um, to know that I'm touching people and helping people. And, and you know, that's what we do, right? We're uh, we're here for a purpose. We're not here to just exist. We're here to, to change lives and help help each other and, and do great things, you know? Um, so, we talk about that a lot. Uh, we also talk about the universe, how crazy it is. I did a, a, uh, my morning message on Sunday was about having grace. Uh, giving yourself grace um, that we can't, you know, you got to kind of be happy where you are a little bit. We can't just keep striving constantly and constantly burning ourselves up. And then we also have to give grace to the people around us that give them the benefit of the doubt and give them a little break and not be on them so hard that, you know, if they mess up, you know, people are going to mess up and stuff's going to happen. Give them the benefit of the doubt. And then uh, I'm listening to your Friday fire and you're talking about grace. And I didn't listen to that Friday until today. And we have the same vibe going. It's just really wild how the universe works. Yeah, I have a confession to make about that, man. I just, um, I have time set aside in my schedule on a Tuesday to record Friday fires. And then I have time set aside in my schedule on a Wednesday, just in case I don't get to them on a Tuesday because I really don't like procrastinating. And so the last four or five Friday fires I've recorded at about eight o'clock on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> And that's my confession. It's nothing to do with my organizational skills. I'm very organized. I'm, I stick to my calendar. I just can never think of anything good to talk about. And um, I took that. Uh, it, it's from G Code. I think it's on page 78. Oh, that was it. That was the serendipity from today. Somebody was tech- messaging me G Code and they're like, this bit really resonated. And um, I'm going to jump in and find the message real quick. And uh, it's, it's a funny funny deal she's like this bit really resonated um page 78 had the nugget i needed how life is the opposite of how you're educated as a child as a child you're taught and tested and as an adult you are tested and then taught and yeah. um, that's exactly what i talked about friday yeah, just like friday. yeah it's true yeah but she hadn't listened to friday fire she was <laughs> just re- she was reading g-code and she actually hit me up and said, hey, do you know anyone wants, wants this copy of the book? I said, why don't you like it? She's like, no, I'm done with it. I like to give my books away when I'm done, but pay them forward so other people can get to enjoy them. So, uh, it's really yeah, crazy it's, how that just keeps aligning. Like I, I speak about stuff that comes to my gut and I talk about it and I scroll through Facebook and I see something you posted or something someone else posted. and It's the same thing I just said and I know they didn't hear it yet, you know, it's uh, or from the day before or whatever. Uh, I think the weird thing for me on this journey is is 
seeing manifestation happen in yes. real time. Yes. Like, you don't, like, I don't believe any of this shit. Like, it was way too hippie for me. Way too hippie. Um, write some shit down that you're happy about. What the fuck is that? Like, you know, like I've got other things to do. I've got a business to run. I've got yeah. payroll to go make. Yeah. Oh, just, just stop doing what you're doing. Write down five things you're happy about. Yeah. Like, I'm not happy about anything. This thing is like, <laughs> like it's fucking eating my lunch. I'm trying to get this business doing what it's supposed to do. And yet, over the last, you know, almost two years now since I've been doing it, um, making that switch, I did it for 39 years the wrong way. And... Um, like when they tell you, when people tell you that like you can manifest anything you want, um, you don't really believe it until you start manifesting shit. And I spent, the reason I can talk on this is I spent a good amount of time over the last day or two um, writing down my next set of goals because everything I've manifested has happened. So I'm like, well, shit, I, sh I should have wrote down bigger numbers. Um, I should have wrote down bigger stuff. I really should. So uh, we're working on it, man. We're working on that. Yeah, that's something so, to, uh, you know, we bring God into the thing. Uh, I was listening to a Joel Osteen the other morning. He was talking about the same idea that, you know, we try and force stuff. You know, we kind of just got to, you know, take a breath, believe it's going to happen, you know, have faith and, and let it happen. I mean, yeah, we got to drive and we got we to keep doing what's right. But uh, at the same time, sometimes I think we over overdrive it and we uh we burn ourselves up in the process because we're trying to make it happen too fast too too quick and uh i think sometimes you just gotta take a breath step away let it happen you know manifest it let it happen you know it's, i uh, totally agree you know sometimes we just push too hard and you really say you really gets to be oh she's having phone issues and no shit yeah <laughs> can i say wait i can say that out loud um <laughs> it's your channel yeah. <laughs> you, you're the you're the one brings me on here man I, di I didn't do this i didn't do this so <laughs> if i'm gonna start interviewing you in a minute that's all right so, interview, me, yeah. interview brian it, it makes it hard to do a two-man podcast when you're reading on your phone mate all right i just uh, texted her back and said get a rest on the computer yeah yeah no worries all right so oh business God. you're it's in business we we're just talking about i just came from a closing this afternoon um <laughs> Really fun thing. This house I sold, I think it was the fourth time I actually sold the same house because uh, the deals kept falling through. I don't know if you have that out there. We get these bidding wars going and it gets all crazy and then uh, people put it off. You mean you, fa you failed at it three times is what you're saying? Yeah, no, I won because I got, uh, I actually You won got, finally. You just found, you found three other ways. I actually the deal ways. and I got a 15000 over asking price, so I did pretty good considering the deal fell through four times. You, you so. just found four other ways not to sell it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wasted all that time. <laughs> Nobody high. So how long have you been a realtor, man? Oh, let's see. We're uh, a little over four years now. We should talk about like we should talk about clusterfuck deals, man. Oh God, there's a bunch <laughs> of them out there. We could probably we could probably go on. Apartment but... showing up for the oil tank that wasn't abandoned, and then uh, he had a gas conversion that wasn't done. You know, the code and uh, the mold that they found, and the asbestos on the pipes that they found, and you know, just all the good stuff that we got to deal with as a realtor to to make happen. Otherwise, the deal doesn't close. Um, Dude, we we sold one one time, um, and it took months to put together. There was airship issues. There was um, there there was a <clears throat> there was a lawsuit that I'd never heard of. And my background is in a lot of people don't know my backgrounds in real estate law, which is why I was like really excited to interview to talk to the lady tonight. Um, but I'd never even heard of this happening. Is when a will had been probated, and then. Oh, it was about um, six years later, they went back and unprobated it by Ooh. judgment. And they changed what the fucking um, final thing of the probate court was. I had no idea well, you could do that. Before, right? No, uh -uh. they changed the final thing of what the probate court was. Anyway, long story short, we ended up giving this, this woman who hadn't had the easiest of lives and didn't have the um, most diverse uh, mental acumen she could have had we ended up giving her just short of a quarter million dollars <laughs> and uh, oh. the very the very afternoon she got her check the first post she made on her facebook page was hey guys does anybody know a legit place to buy a monkey <laughs> you need a monkey you know it's important and then no about five, dude it was a mess <laughs> it was a mess about about five days later there's this thing uh she's doing a selfie video going down vegas uh, boulevard screaming yeah vegas baby and now i don't i don't know if she's got any of the money left and it's been sure about 
I think we closed that last November, so I don't know. I don't know how it's going for her. A similar hope- story, but it's a good thing. Uh, this house, uh, so I work with an estate attorney, a friend of mine, and it's the second one now. But this one, uh, he tells me, this lady has a house, pipe broken, and the house is gutted. She's in a nursing home. Her husband's in a nursing home. Um, crazy story. At least put them in the same home. Yeah, they're in the same nursing home. Okay. Um, and some real estate agent offered her 210000 for this house. And he goes, that sounds a little cheap, right? And I go, yeah, it does. Like, what's the detail? So I look into it, whatever, and I'm like, yeah, it's way cheap. So um, he was to say, I just sold the house for almost 400000 So this real estate agent was coming in trying to hose this old lady who desperately needs the money because she needs to pay the nursing home bills. And she needs, she's actually, you know, recovered now, and she needs to move out of the nursing home back into a house. But she can't move in her house because the house is gutted, and she really can't general contract putting her house back together. Right. So she's got insurance just sold money. It so she took the insurance money. I sold the house, and uh, we'll pay off the mortgage on the house, and we're going to set her up with like two hundred thousand in her pocket to go uh, live the rest of her life. Where um, this real estate agent was trying to hose her for two hundred thousand, and um, yeah, it's just shady stuff that goes on. So, Dude, you know, but I, there's 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 sharks in the fucking water everywhere. Oh, yeah. Don't matter what business you're in. Um, there's 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 people will take advantage and I guess that's why core values are so important around what we do. And the fact that I've been in this market 21 years now. Um, and yeah, all you've got is, all you've got is that name. And I don't understand like, yeah, if I buy a house for 200 and it's clearly worth four, there's a quick lick on there for me to make a couple hundred grand, but a couple hundred grand isn't worth my integrity. It's just not worth the reputation we've built. And it's not. Went from basically having zero dollars to her name to having two hundred thousand to her name. I mean, right. life changing, life changing. You know, and she's an older lady. Obviously, a horrible story. Her husband went into the nursing home. She was living in a house by herself. She fell down the stairs and laid on the floor for three days until someone found her. You just um, make this shit up, man. I mean, it's just crazy. It's crazy. So then she's in a nursing home, and so now we just set her up. Well, we'll get this house closed, and we'll set up with about two hundred grand in her pocket, and she'll be able to live the rest of her life with money in her pocket, and rather, you know. So how did? How did you get into selling fucking real estate? Because real estate is generally a career, um, or real estate sales, is generally a career for stay-at-home moms and divorced blokes that have no fucking clue what to do with the rest of their lives. So how did you figure out a career in real estate? Because for me, it was just completely accidental. It wasn't intentional whatsoever. It was like, oh, that looks like fun. Let's go do it. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me show you guys and link you down. I'm going to try and do this again. Let's see. Okay. Oh, well, oh, I got you. I got you. One second. It's okay. Going. I was hired to teach realtors marketing. And um, <laughs> yeah, so real estate, um, my story was I was a flipper. Um, I flipped houses, started about 20 years ago flipping houses, and I never got my license because my friend Patty was my real estate agent. And well, you don't need a license to flip anyway. Well, I mean, she would find, yeah, she would find them for me. I would redo them, and then she would sell them. So. Mm-hmm. I never bothered getting my license because you know I'd be. In competition she's she's got to make she's got to make her a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I get so that. she did hers and I did mine, and she taught me basically taught me the whole real estate business over the last fifteen years I worked with her. You know, we did like I usually did like one and a half a year. I'd call like every eight months, and mm-hmm. uh, did a bunch of them and did well. And uh, about five years ago or so, she started flipping on her own, which can't blame her. Like she's like, wait, you know, I can hire a general contractor and I can mm-hmm. do this too. And she learned everything that you know I taught her and of course I learned everything from real estate um, you know she had taught me so I got my license a little over four years ago and uh, it was funny when I took the test I, I went in and my friend Joe who was teaching the class I didn't friend now wasn't you know I met him for the first time when I took the class and I said I'm just getting my license so I can you know so I can flip houses and he goes talk for 10 minutes he goes you're gonna sell and I go nah I don't want to work weekends I don't want to do open house on the weekends I just want to flip houses and he goes no you're gonna sell and if I never do another open house again, I'll die quite happy. <laughs> I, I just don't enjoy them. I, I, I don't. do sometimes. I, I like I like meeting the people. I like, you know, uh, there's a lot of nonsense. I do too, but after through. after the 17th person, I'm kind of like, yep, it's a house. Go fucking yeah. look at it. <laughs> like, all, the pitch, all the pitches are on the internet. Sign in here. Come on. Well, that's yeah, that's what's actually I started doing is I do the, the vote 3D tours and stuff now. And mm-hmm. I tell everyone, go look at the 3D tour if you're interested, call me. Because, like, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't need people just looking to look. You know, I don't need the neighbors coming to look. If we're going to do an open house, I want to make sure that you're Did interested. Did you always get the you always you get get the neighbors it, looking? It, but open it's cut houses. down on a lot now. Like, you know, before I show a house, I send them the 3D tour. I said, did you see the 3D tour yet? 
And they said, yes, oh, yeah. you know. And I go look at it and I go, all right, yeah, I definitely want to see it now. Or, yeah, no, you know, I don't like the layout. I, well, I think yeah. driving around and looking at 15 houses in a weekend is an absolute waste of time. Oh, with, with, but, you know, in the past, when all you had was print print advertising and a couple of pictures, and, yeah, I could, I could see a, a, an agent putting together a list of houses and taking you by 15 of them and picking one you liked. But, like, nowadays, like, we do all that with the computer. I... Before I go looking at houses with a buyer, I've got it narrowed down. Like they've seen everything on the MLS, we've already looked around, and they know what they're going to go see. Like, and that way you show three, four, five houses, yeah, maybe probably maybe six max, done. and they buy. Usually yeah. it's three or four. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah it's that's normally three or four. Um, I like that. Anything more than that, it's it's not you know you know it's like HGTV. You know, you look at three and you buy one. You know, um, one it's thing like I've what? done with what did uh, you say? HGTV, that. You know, that show where you know where you, oh, you look at three houses, yeah. pick one. You know. No, that's not real, mate. That's all made up. It's real in my world, man. I don't show more than six houses. No, I mean actual like <laughs> newbies, like like the budgets on that oh, yeah. shit. Just it's just like I'm like there's no yeah. there is no fucking way you remodeled this entire kitchen and removed that wall for seven thousand yeah, dollars. Stop yeah. it, <laughs> you know. Yeah, not even you know, especially from New York budget. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, the last renovation I did, it's on the market right now. Uh, you know, we spent over six figures renovating. We went top to bottom. Yeah, over I used to, six flip, I used to put about a hundred in. I put yeah. 100 in, get 100 out. You know, so if I mm -hmm. buy it for 300, I put 100 in, 400 in it, and, you know, get 500 for it. You know, 100 mm -hmm. in, 100 out was pretty much my standard operating procedures. And I made as little as seven, I made as much as 160, you know, and that's the way the cookie crumbles. But I never lost. Uh, so knock on wood. As, as long as you make a little bit. I lost once in 2005. Uh, I was 20, 25 years old. I lost 14 grand on a deal. And at the time, if we're going by percentages, that was like 98% of everything I fucking had. Um, mm -hmm. But I paid a $14,000 lesson, and I've never lost money on a residential yeah. flip ever again. Um, so that says a lot. Um, well, yeah, I've lost money on... Buy, you know? Yeah, I lost money on a commercial uh, deal that I was involved in. It was a development deal. Um, but I've never lost money on commercial since. It was my price of entry into the commercial okay. space. A, a lot of people don't realize that sometimes it really does cost a million dollars to get a million dollar education. It does, it does. Like you have to, like, I look at the amount of money I've lost over the last five years and I'm like, oh shit, there's a million dollar education, mate. And that's why we talk about uh, coaching, right? That's why we hire coaches. That's right? why you do it. So, you so you hire us to, to teach you not to make the mistakes that we made because we made those million dollar mistakes and, you know, for a lot less than a million bucks, I could show you what not to do. <laughs> so you sat on them and polished them. So go on, then let's dig in a minute. What, what's your biggest fuck up, man? What did you learn from it? Um, probably my biggest um, thing. Sorry, that hurt failure. Me. Biggest thing biggest that hurt failure. me was I bought a ton of rental properties in North Carolina and I leveraged the crap out of them. I had mortgage on top of mortgage on top of mortgage, and when times were good, it was great. I was making like ten grand a month, and you know, I was like, "Oh, this is awesome! Ten grand a month, from my head on a pillow, and like, you know, this is the ticket. I'm gonna keep buying more." Then the economy crashed, and uh, I couldn't keep them rented. And I went up coming out of pocket, you know, paying all the mortgages on all these properties because, I mean, it was just eviction after eviction after eviction. And, you know, um, you kind of live and learn. You know, basically, I was way over leveraged. I probably owned them too expensive. You know, I, I paid too much for them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, didn't know what I was doing. I was just buying rental properties, you know. And, yeah, if if you're in if you're in underwater, you can't you can't get rid of them. You're gonna you know, pay that so balance I off. owned them upside down, and I couldn't get out of them, and I couldn't rent them, and it really ate me alive. And again, that's really what we talk about. This so it's a, that's what made me lose my way and make me get. So how did you get drunk, how you know? did you get out of that situation? Uh, I stuck it out until the economy turned around and uh, dumped them when I could break even, basically, and get out of them. Which I got you. Looking back, I mean. I don't know. Yeah, in, hi in hindsight, hindsight, you'd have been you know, I, I well rich short now. And I locked in my losses, you know. But at the same yeah. time, I was trying to stop the bleeding because I, you know, but um, I don't know if I could have stuck it out a little bit longer. But the other problem is, you know, a lot of the properties needed work. You know, they needed, you know, uh, AC compressors. They needed roofs. They need, you know, all kinds of stuff. One had a mold issue. You know, it was like, it just, you know, it was like, I, I got to get out of this. I can't do this anymore, you know. So, so I still got a couple was the left. What was the lesson then? What did, what did you learn from that shit? Lesson was uh, twofold. One, um, buy them right. I was paying too much for them. Um, don't make sure that the, the cash flow is better than it is so that, you know, um, multi-family units so that there's always some rent coming in. Um, right, right. You know, when you're on, you know, one or two families and the rent don't come in, it's a full mortgage is on you. You know, if you got a five family and two of the rents don't come in, you know, and three of the rents don't come in, if you buy it right, it still covers itself. 
Um, yeah. yeah, that's part of it. Um, the other problem was they were North Carolina. When I first bought down there, I had a great property manager. I was just saying, that's not close to where you're yeah, at. Yeah, no, it? not even close to where I am. Um, That'd be a long way to ride your bike down there. Yeah, mate. it's a long bike ride. Mm. Yeah, so we ride at dawn for a couple of days. Um, <laughs> Wait, what, what possessed you to buy um, a fucking friend of mine. rental properties out of state? Because, you know, again, I'm, I've done rental properties before. I don't have any right now. Um, but I'm probably going to pick up a few over the course of the next 12 months. Um, one thing for me is, man, even though I'm, I don't intend to manage my own properties, I would still like to be able to drive by them and just kind of check on shit.